The next thing we're going to talk about is the chain rule. So you had the product rule in the last one, and now we're going to do the chain rule. And the chain rule applies to an even more complicated way of mixing up functions where you have one function go into another. What do I mean? Well, let's suppose that g of x, just like last time, is the natural log of x. And let's suppose that f of x is equal to 3x plus 2. We did last time what happens if you multiply these together, but the chain rule might be something like this. We're going to have, instead of f of x multiplied by g of x, we're going to have f of x, and instead of an x, we're going to put g of x inside f of x. So we get this kind of crazy uh, nested structure. What would that look like if we had in this example? Well, f of x is equal to 3 times x plus 2, but instead of x, we're putting g of x in, so this is going to be 3 times the natural log of x plus 2. Okay? Turns out that's not that hard for us to do. We'd be able to figure that out, but let's figure out how to do it using the chain rule because there will be cases when you really do need to know that. Okay? So if you're going to use the chain rule, the rule of thumb is the derivative is going to be equal to first you take the derivative of the outside guy and you leave the inside alone then you multiply that by the derivative of the inside guy okay so in this example where we've got y equals uh, 3x plus 2 times or where x is equal to the natural log of x so we've got basically this equation if we use the chain rule to solve that we would start by saying dy dx the derivative of this outer term f is 3 and then we would multiply that by the natural log of g and then we would multiply all of that by the natural log in I'm sorry I almost forgot so the natural the derivative of this guy is 3x to the power of 1 so then we need to multiply this to the 1 minus 1 power and then we multiply that by the derivative of g of x which is 1 over x okay so 3 times the natural log of x raised to the power of 1 minus 1 times 1 over x is our derivative and it turns out this is really simple because anything no matter how ugly or complicated raised to the power of 1 minus 1 raised to the power of 0 is just 1 because if it's raised to the power of 0 it's telling us that you don't have any of whatever this thing is so this is equal to 3 times 1 times 1 over x or 3 times 1 over x and you can verify that if you didn't know that this was a chain of two functions and you just took the derivative of this, that's what you would get, okay? But this is the thing to really know, not the example, that for the chain rule to work, you take the derivative of the uh, first function, using just leaving g of x as it is, and then you take the derivative of the second function and multiply it by what you get.